स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया video lecture we are going to talk about wave equation and uh, the solutions of wave equation so in the last class we have seen that uh, the wave equation it does admit a unique solution right you have a i mean uh, you can actually talk about uh, uh, if you can talk about the solution so let's say if there is a solution then the solution is unique that's what we have shown now in this part what we are going to do is uh, at focus our attention on the existence part okay but uh, i mean if you know if you remember for the uh, laplace and uh, heat yeah uh, if we wanted to talk about uh, the existence of solution in the initial cases what we were doing was we were looking for scaling kind of yeah in uh, heat equation we looked at some scaling if you remember yeah uh, so basically functions which scale huh? and then uh, with the help of that we uh, deduce some fundamental solution and in case of laplacian also we have used some uh, radial uh, function right so we do we, we were looking for a radial function uh, which are the solutions of the equation and then uh, since laplacian is rotational invariant and then we can uh, you know talk about the fundamental solution here what we are going to do is nothing like that so as i told you, you see heat and laplace is a i mean you know they are like brothers kind of yeah wave equation is a different thing yeah so in wave equation uh, the structure is very elegant actually yeah uh, so for now what uh, i'm going to do is i'm going to do it for n equals to one so the spatial dimension is one okay spatial dimension is one and uh, after this we do it for uh, the you know the higher dimensions so in most of the books or you know most of the um, um, general courses the simple course which you do the first 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 course in pd generally they treat the n equals to one case okay uh, so here we are going to do the n equals to one case uh, assuming that we do not know i mean i am quite sure most of you do not know even the n equals to one case okay um, maybe you did not study it and uh, in your course so we are going to do that and then we'll go from there okay uh, so now the problem which we have is uh, uh, if you remember it is a initial boundary value problem okay so i'm not writing all that initial boundary value problem so the equation will look like this utt minus laplacian of u now n equals to 1 laplacian of u is u xx equals to 0 right this is in r cross 0 infinity clear and u of course is g okay so you will be given information on u where on the mm, this thing boundary yeah so in this case the boundary is of course the base t equals to 0 and you will be given the value of u and ut ut is h right so this is on r cross t equals to 0 if you remember uh, in the bounded domain case uh, you know in the unique test case what we did is u was g on the parabolic uh, sorry on the um, omega t bar minus omega t right yeah uh, so the closure minus the uh, omega t and here um, uh, ut the information of ut is given on the base so here uh, that uh, i mean of course that particular thing because r is unbounded this is essentially that boundary becomes r cross t equals to 2 yes now here g and h r and h are given okay i am not specifying what they are for now, let's just assume that there are some G and A given. I want to talk about it. Okay. Now, before I do that, I I want to specify another thing. So this is just another reminder. See, the point is this. Uh, I mean, I I don't know whether I have told you guys this thing or not. I should, but should, uh, I should have explained it later um, before. So see, here in heat, Laplace, wave equation, and all, all of this is required. I mean, all of this ha work has to be done. Why? Because you see, this problem. If we, if I am just asking you to solve it, you guys can solve this problem. Of course, you can do it. Yeah. But the thing is, the boundary conditions has to be nice. You know, G and H has to be nice functions. Otherwise, the problem is, uh, 
you see this problem so for, okay uh, for r cross 0 infinity if this side of domain is there see this problem can be solved by separation of variable right separation of variable and and i think uh, most of you guys know what separation of variable is if you don't know let me write it it's basically this u of xt is uh, some function let's say capital x of x okay and capital y of y so you are basically capital y of t let's say hmm? so basically you are looking for a function which is a function of x times function of y now if you put it in the equation that will split it up into two different parts one is a function of x so it, it will give you two different ODs. yeah with this boundary condition those ODs can be solved maybe yeah maybe there is no guarantee that it can be most of the times with uh, nice enough boundary conditions we can do it yeah so after that uh, and uh, you do that thing and you get your solution so the, on those things you guys already know yeah separation of variable one very nice thing about separation of variable is it gives us an expressive solution okay so one nice thing is uh, it provides provides an explicit solution explicit solution clear yeah? okay so it provides an explicit solution but there is this is a pro this is a pro there but there is a con and the con is a big one the con is see it only holds for domain so if you don't know now you know what i'm trying to say is this what is what is the main problem with separation of see uh, generally what i see in, is most of the uh, i mean uh, students if i whenever i ask uh, to solve some let's say heat equation wave equation laplace equation whatever they start doing separation of variable that is not true you cannot use separation of otherwise you see there is no point of starting any pd right you just do separation of variable you get a solution and you are done right okay it is not true because in most of the time the problem in the main problem is this more it does not hold for um, most domains yeah let me put it this way most domains what i mean by most domains is this see of course it, with this equation this relation separation of variable you can use but the thing is for separation of variable to work to get an explicit solution you need these boundary conditions also right these boundary conditions see here the boundary is a straight line or you know some some nice uh, boundary so you can do this but uh, in a crazy looking domain like this you can't use the separation of variable right okay so it holds for most domains um, for it does not hold huh? let me put it this way it does not hold for most domains does not hold for most domains huh? uh, that is what i meant is uh, for rectangular domains for rectangular domains or uh, you know triangular domains rectangular domain or you know uh, disc disc or uh, uh, you know the the whole ball in r n or something like that those kind of domains it will work uh, it works huh? but not in an arbitrary domain yeah so but not in arbitrary domain in arbitrary domain so you do realize that uh, i mean uh, this is a big con here i mean you cannot expect always your solutions to be you know a nice uh, domain like this you know you cannot expect your solutions to be nice domain like this or in the whole space yeah so in those cases what do you do i mean the you, uh, that, then you are just uh, left out with nothing right okay so these these kind of things are uh, used i mean this method which i am going to uh, i mean you know develop right now they will be helpful in those kind of cases okay uh, which is most of the time most cases okay right so uh, let us come back to the method which i am trying to find here and this is a very very simple method what i am going to do is see this is uh, this can be made more precise but uh, we do not i don't think that we have the um, technical capacity of doing that but uh, i will just uh, write down as much mathematically as possible so what i'm going to do is this see if you just write down this equation this equation looks like this no del to u del t square minus del to u del x square okay so this is given to be zero okay this is given to be zero now you see you can write i mean this is i mean 
see this is an operator of course i mean this this is not a like a square minus b square kind of thing but you can of course break it up right if you just do it yeah i am um, not quite sure whether you, uh, you guys know uh, any algebra on uh, operators or not but you can write it like this yeah del del x del del t minus sorry this let me put it as a plus uh, there is no mistake here but uh, let me do it like this huh? u this is equals to 0 i can write it like this yeah so i am what i am going to do is essentially i am going to break so this operator see this operator you can think of it like this del 2 del t square minus del 2 del x square acting at u is 0 so that's an operator yeah this is an operator what is an operator a operator takes a function and puts gives you back another function here it is taking a u and giving you back another uh, zero here and giving you back a clear zero zero function not a number zero function zero say everywhere it is zero okay so this particular operator what i'm going to do is i'm going to break it up into two parts yeah this is mathematically true you can of course do this thing but uh, the mathematics which is required for this we did not do it right now i don't think that most of you have seen this sort of mathematics but for now you you do realize that it should have been something like this no yes uh, so this is coming from the algebra of operators okay algebra of operators okay so for now let's just assume this part yeah i i don't think that it is very difficult for thing for you to assume but because this is very straightforward it's like a square minus b square is a plus b a minus b kind of thing yeah now this again i'm using some definitions of operator here okay so please uh, i mean bear with me here uh, because this will make uh, life much easier now what you do is we set this thing this particular thing okay as some function uh, let's say v okay so set v of x t to be del del t minus del del x of u here yeah? so which is what which is del u del t minus del u del x okay so see uh, why i wrote it i am always using the shorthand notation u t t u x x here i am writing it like this just for you to understand that we can break it up like this yeah otherwise you may get confused so this is u t minus u x right so that's your shorthand notation this is shorthand okay so v looks like that here and then so let's say that's your two okay let's call this as one so then from 2 what do you get from 2 what we get is uh, one second let me see uh, from from 2 what do you get uh, in terms of v we get it is v t plus v of x is 0 right because this is v then uh, this operator acts on v then yeah okay so that is zero. right so let let us understand what we are doing mathematically yeah let's let's see that we are saying that um, i mean we are assuming that if you write an operator like this so basically what we are going to do is let's say a b times some function f yeah if you have something like this then i can write it as i can just leave b out and i can look at a out and i can look at how b behaves with on f okay whatever it does then i can take the action of a and uh, i can work with that huh? okay so this is uh, think of this as a definition kind of yeah so i can use that particular thing here now once i have this that is giving way it's an operator so it acts on u and gives me some function v that v now again del del t plus del del x acting on v so that is this this is equals to the function zero okay right so now what we are going to do is essentially you see our equation as uh, we have just seen it reduces so let me write down here otherwise it may get confusing so the equation looks like this no vt at the point xt plus vx at the point xt is going to be zero clear so this is for x in r and t greater than zero okay now as you can remember this is a very uh, you know known equation to us this is a 
this is called a transport equation right so this is a transport equation with constant coefficients of course yeah so let's say call let's call it three yeah so three is a transport equation transport equation okay and the solution of it and the solution of 3 is given by how is it given uh, v of xt yeah so i am going to write the solutions uh, i mean directly because uh, i mean of course you guys can write it down right this is transport equation you just write down uh, you know that uh, um, the so solution using method of characteristics yeah? so it is x minus t yeah what is a where a of x is going to be defined as the value of v at the point x0 not the point x0 but on the line x0 okay now so it, it is fine this is a transport equation and the solution is given by some function of x minus t of course here a is in c1 of r that is given yeah it will be in c1 of r so that is your v now what is v v is essentially again again since v of xt is defined by del del t minus del del x of u of xt right v is defined by this right so if you just put it there what you have is it is ut minus u of x equals to a of x minus t that's the equation which you are going to get so this equation is in r cross 0 infinity clear okay again what sort of equation is this again this is a transport equation the difference so let's call it 4 now the difference between 4 and 5, 3 is this see this is a transport equation of course the sign difference is there but here it's a homogeneous equation right and this equation is not a homogeneous equation anymore it's a inhomogeneous or a non-homogeneous equation right but i mean it's not very again um, you know the same method of characteristic works here yes you can use the method of characteristics and let me write down the uh, you know the solution here okay so here if you want to write down the solution so uh, one thing i am assuming this thing yeah i'm not solving this problem because you know we already did these things uh, in the first week yeah uh, how to solve this kind of problems you know using uh, method of characteristics yeah so i'm not going to do this thing you guys can handle it yourself i'm quite uh, confident about that so this is 0 to t a of x plus uh, t minus 2s okay ds plus b of i will write down what b is yeah b of x plus t and if you uh, if you do a change of variable so essentially you do x plus t minus 2z to be uh, 2s to be some some something z or something yeah then you you can just change this variable and you can write it like this half times x minus t to x plus t i hope this is fine yeah uh, a of xi d xi clear why you can write it let's say we call this as xi so you see at t equals to 0 what is going to happen uh, so at at s equals to 0 uh, this limit will be x plus t the lower limit and the upper limit will be at uh, s equals to t it will be uh, x minus t yeah and uh, d s will be changed to minus 2 d xi so that half is coming and minus uh, is there so that is why the limit interchanges right okay so that that's uh, quite uh, easy thing to follow and plus b of xt now what is b of xt here uh, this uh, where uh, i mean maybe i can write it here where b of x okay this we are going to define it as u of x comma z yeah so u of x comma zero i'm defining it like b of x plus t okay once i have this then uh, you see now i have to come to see i do not know what a if i just solve 
let us understand what we are doing see if we if we just solve this equation yeah for just normal this equation then the solution is given by some function of x minus t right this function is a arbitrary c1 function right and similarly here also the function which you are getting see b a is there and b is there this b is also an arbitrary c1 function right see this b is in c1 of r that's an uh, these two are arbitrary functions we don't know what a and b are yeah we have to find what a and b are to do that what we are going to do is we are going to invoke the you know initial and the boundary condition yeah so let's do that see the first initial condition the initial condition condition gives b of x is g of x that is quite clear right why because on the base u is g yeah because you see at uh, x equals uh, t equals to 0 at t equals to 0 u is g and by definition that is b so b is g clear so the initial condition gives b is g there there is no confusion about it okay now what about the other one so let us write it down here yeah? uh, now i will use the second initial condition okay so the second initial condition will give us a of x equals to v at the point x0 that is what we define you see where is it uh, i define some huh? a of x is given by v of x0 right so a of x is given by v of x0 which is by uh, which is given by ut at the point x0 minus ux at the point x0 right because v is given by ut minus ux at the evaluated at the point x0 so this is given evaluated at the point x0 and now this is given by h of x that's the boundary condition given to you so uh, if you remember in the boundary ut is given by h right minus ux at the point x0 what is u at the point x0 that is g so ux at the point x0 is g prime of x yeah u at the point u the base in the base u is given by g so ux is given by g prime yeah uh, you know just did we because you know we get this g we are assuming here see of course the assumption here is h and g i mean they are smooth for now we just assume they are smooth okay now now if we su substitute all of this in u in this u okay let's say call it 4 now substituting all this in 4 so substituting a and b in 5 we have we have u of x comma t that is given by half x minus t to x plus t h of xi d xi minus g prime of xi okay uh, so let me write it this way yeah to be better actually minus g prime of xi this whole thing yeah this whole thing d xi okay okay Ma plus g of x plus t clear okay and hence and hence u of x comma t that will be given by half g of x plus t plus g of x minus t plus half x minus t to x plus t h of xi d xi clear so this is for x in r and t greater than 0 okay i mean this is clear i i just put all the values together and see u is given by 
this particular thing uh, half of x minus t to x plus t as i dz plus b of x plus t okay so i am just substituting all that value here and this is what i am getting okay so u of x t is given by half uh, g of x plus t plus so you know of course you have to break this up you see half g prime of xi that is given by half g of x plus t minus half g of x minus t with a negative sign so you know and then when it get incorporated with plus g of x plus t then that will give you u of x t to be whatever is written here okay yeah? i mean this is from fundamental theorem of calculus so let me write it down this is via the fundamental theorem so we are using fundamental theorem here on this yeah to get this thing uh, so for using fundamental theorem let me put it this way fundamental theorem of calculus right of course here we are assuming g and h are smooth okay of course at, you don't need uh, smoothness but at least you need g is in c1 because uh, you understand that we have to take derivative huh? this formula so the formula this formula let's say call, let's call it uh, six huh? that's not a for this formula is not a fundamental theorem of calculus you use fundamental theorem of calculus in this on this domain um, yeah, i mean uh, term huh? and then you get this here okay so six is called is called the d'alembert formula yeah this is very important and uh, i want you guys to uh, you know remember this thing i mean because you know we generally use it most of the time so without even you know calculating this thing so you do not have to calculate all the time just remember this thing this g is the base u at the point x0 remember this thing the average of that x plus t and x minus t you take the average of that okay and that g what is this g corresponding to u at the point x0 and this h you take corresponding to u t at the point x0 yeah okay now uh we, before moving on what i want to what i want to do here is this, this is a, a simple thing but uh, this is what i need you to check yourself huh? please so please check this part check see this is the the for the real number formula which i derived yes this formula i have derived using method of characteristics yeah without doing that you can also derive it so how can you do that see what is the problem you are given utt minus uxx is zero yes so this in r cross zero infinity and u at the point x zero is g ut at the point x0 is given by h right so that is given x is in r of course huh? uh, not okay let me write it x is in r right now see if you really want to solve this problem this is what sort of equation is this if you remember i am not writing all that yeah but uh, i mean i guess you guys already know so this is assuming that you guys know canonical form yeah so given a elliptic uh, sorry given a second order linear equation so let's say given an equation like this a of um, uxx plus b of uxy plus c of uyy plus some lower order term containing ux cy u okay um, this equals to zero let's say that's your given equation then you can have a transformation so basically x y going to xi eta okay uh, i'm just uh, roughly you know revisiting that canonical form so you have a change of variable there is a change of variable which looks like this and if you define w of xi eta to be u of x y okay if you define something like this so define this if i if you define something like this you can show that there exists a change of variable and how is the change of variable given xi of x y sorry uh, this is not x okay no problem huh? xi of x y is given by x plus y and eta of x y is given by x minus y okay with this change of variable if this equation so let's say number one one let's say this equation is hyperbolic uh, if 
um, let me so before this here yeah? uh, assuming define this assuming one is hyperbolic hyperbolic okay uh, that is that is b square minus 4 ac this is positive if this happens okay then then your equation this equation let's call it star huh? so this equation also falls in this uh, category right uh, this category right okay so this star then star um, can be written as written as w xi eta equals to 0 where xi is given by this so let me put it this way xi of this is t here yeah? xi of x comma t is given by x plus t and x comma t eta is given by x minus t okay i hope you understand what i am trying to do here is this i am showing you another way so this is let me put it this way another way way of deducing of deducing d l inverse l inverse formula huh? so d l inverse formula is from a homogeneous um, equation right so how do you deduce it see this is another way given a second order equation linear equation given by six okay you see you can of course show that there is a change of variable here so basically the jacobian of the determinant is uh, i mean the jacobian of the transformation is non-zero yeah you have a change of variable and if you define w to be w of xi eta to be u of x y then of course assuming there is a solution u which looks like that then let's say this six uh, six is hyperbolic this six uh, linear equation is six is hyperbolic that is this equation happens huh? of course star is hyperbolic see when is six hyperbolic this is i am assuming that you guys know what canonical transformation is yeah so this is called a canonical transformation right canonical transformation transformation okay so assuming that uh, b square minus 4 is let's say here if b square minus 4 ac is greater than 0 then the problem is hyperbolic in our case star b square minus 4 ac c is 0 right and a b is 1 1 1 so minus 4 ac is of course mm, positive see a is minus 1 b is 1 okay so minus 4 ac is positive so the star is hyperbolic okay and then i mean with this change of variable and the uh, defining w to be u you can actually reduce star to something like this w of xi eta equals to 0 where xi is x plus t and eta is x minus t clear now if something like this happens therefore if you want to write it what is w of xi eta what is it it is um, some function let's say capital a of xi plus capital b of eta clear for some a b in c two c two of r clear okay uh, so you can write uh, w like that and therefore hence hence u of x t equals to uh, some function of x plus t plus some function of x minus t yeah that is there yes now what i want you guys to do is this so i want you to verify this whole thing down do you understand what i'm trying to say i want you to want you guys to verify the whole thing so use a change of variable which looks like this and transform this equation this star to a equation which looks like that once you do that w of xi eta will look like a some function of xi plus some function of eta huh? once and then you write u of x t to be this here put the initial uh, condition u at the point x0 is g and ut at the point x0 is a so now what i want you to do is this uh, put the initial conditions on u of x t 
and deduce DLMBAR's formula. Deduce DLMBAR's formula. Clear? So, this is another way of looking at uh, the DLMBAR's formula also via canonical transform. Okay, so now I, I hope that you are more or less, the, you know, quite uh, familiar with DLMBAR's formula. Let me write down a small theorem here, which will make our claim much, uh, you know, firm. So, the uh, theorem, assume, assume G is C1 of R, okay, G is U corresponding to at, at the point X0, G is C1 of R and H is in C1 of R. So, basically I am taking G and H to be C1 and define U of X T to be half of G of X plus T clear plus G of X minus T plus half of x minus t to x plus t h of xi t xi okay x is in r and t positive if you write u of x t like this then then u is given by c2 of r cross 0 infinity okay if you write u like that then u is in c2 okay u is in c2 utt minus uxx that is going to be 0 okay in r cross 0 infinity here yeah? so utt minus uxx so basically what it is saying is u solves the hyperbolic equation in one dimension u is twice differentiable with respect to both time and space and 3 how is the boundary condition uh, satisfied it is satisfied in the sense of limit so essentially it says that if you take a limit towards any point x not 0 on the boundary okay so basically you know uh, on the t equals to 0 line then u of xt get converges to g of x naught clear and the same happens with ut limit xt going to x naught 0 t positive ut at the point xt becomes h of x naught yeah so this is the theorem I mean, uh, see, um, we are not going to prove this theorem. There is nothing to prove. U is, of course, C2. That's quite clear, right? H is C1. So, uh, you are taking the integral of a C1 function. That's going to be C2, right? And the, the, G is given to be... G is given to be C1. Right? G is given to be C1. So, okay, I have to take G to be C2. One sec, yeah? Uh, because you see u has to be c2 in time and space right so every component has to be c2 this is this component is already c2 h is c1 integral is c2 this has to be c2 i'm sorry about it uh, this has to change a little bit this has to be c2 of r here g is c2 of r c1 is uh, not um, i mean sufficient we have to increase it it's c2 of r okay right now that is there and uh, what more what else is there what else is there okay so that's uh, this is from the dlm bus form right one dimensional heat equation this is the solution for the one dimensional heat equation okay now one small remark which i want to put here is this remark this is very important okay as you know that for a laplace equation or a heat equation homogeneous okay so in contrast with a laplace or a heat equation laplace or a heat equation 
okay here wave equation the solution huh? the solution of a homogeneous wave equation of yeah. sorry is given by is given by by u yeah in ck provided g in ck and h in ck minus 1 see if you take h to be in ck minus 1 this integral uh, the the um, function defined by this integral um, by fundamental theorem of calculus becomes ck and this is given to be this uh, this part is given to be ck so ck function and ck function the ultimate function u is going to be ck yeah but you cannot say that it is uh, going to be a c infinity function okay uh, as opposed to heat equation you understand so in heat equation that was going to be a c infinity function any solution but here it may not be so if g is ck h is ck minus 1 then u is ck yeah but you cannot say this is c infinity okay so that's a small remark huh? so this is one very vital important uh, important difference between the elliptic and the um, elliptic parabolic or and the hyperbolic case okay so now um, I will do something uh, a little different, not very different. I mean, this is for a different uh, domain. Okay. So, this uh, this is a method which I want to illustrate. So, the method is called the reflection method. Okay. So, this method I am doing it for this particular domain and uh, but you guys can use it in many other uh, places also. Okay. So, it's not a very, uh, it's a very versatile thing to um, use. So, the uh, problem is this, so in one dimension only, n equals to 1 I am taking here. Yeah? So, let us say you are given this equation, u t t minus u x x, this is going to be 0. Yeah? So, initially our problem was something like this. See, we were defining the whole equation in the this domain, right, in this domain. Okay, that is your t, that is your x. Okay. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I wrote the other way. This is this is this is x. This is t. Okay. So now uh, this is the whole domain where the problem was defined in the initial case. But in this case, the problem will be defined only in this part. Okay. Only in this part. So uh, this is in r plus cross zero infinity. Yeah, this is defined in this. U is going to be G and UT is going to be H on R plus cross T equals to 0. Yeah. Okay, so essentially this is the domain which we are working, this is the domain huh? and boundary condition is given only in this part, this part, huh? only in this part. So, u is g in this part and ut is h in this part, okay. And the equation is also given by utt minus uxx but only in this part of the domain. So, um, I do not have any information on this. Okay, DLM bar formula gives us a solution in the whole domain. Okay, right. Now, the thing is, I want to use, uh, I, I want to write down a formula for this problem. Now, I need some more uh, information. So, where G and H are smooth functions, are smooth, okay, mm, so with this information g of 0 is equals to h of 0 which is given by 0 this is very important information for whatever we are going to do work okay g of 0 so at the point 0 this point g and h is going to be 0 clear this is the information which you are going to use now see dlm bar formula says 
that uh, I mean given an equation like this you have a solution given by TL inverse formula but where in R cross 0 infinity but here the information is given only on R plus only in this part this part huh? only in this part so how are you going to uh, so I have to somehow extend our problem to the whole domain on this part also okay we have to extend it in this part also and then we can use TL inverse right how do we do it so we do it using something called a odd reflection okay we do it uh, using something called the odd reflection so what we do we actually set a new kind of function u tilde of xt is given by u of xt okay which is x positive and t positive okay and minus u of minus xt for x negative t positive clear why we wrote it like this we want the reflection to be an odd reflection what is so special about odd reflection so if you see uh, if you approach this uh, any point here any point here so any point uh, this is uh, see u at the point xt that this um, i mean if you um, let, let us take any point here so any point here uh, the x uh, x part is zero and this is any t naught let's say so zero t naught if you are approaching zero t naught so u at the point zero t naught equals to minus u at the point zero t naught so on the uh, in the limit okay and that will give you u at the point so in this line it is going to be uh, zero kind of thing you understand what i'm trying to say okay because 2 0 t naught is going to be 0 and hence u at the point 0 t naught is going to be 0 okay so uh, u tilde i am defining it like this and g tilde also i am going to define uh, so i am going to uh, write it in the whole domain that is given by g of x okay and this is for x positive minus g of minus x this is for x less than equal 0 okay and of course i am also going to write what is h tilde similar thing h of x x greater than equal to 0 and minus h of minus x x less than equal to 0 okay see this is an odd reflection what why we have to take odd reflection here we actually are kind of forced to do an odd reflection because g of 0 is given to be 0 right if this is the case you see if you take x to be a from, from from in the limit g is a smooth function right so i want to extend the function smoothly okay so important thing is extending the function smoothly the function smoothly right i don't want uh, any bump or anything so g ha and h has to be smooth in the whole uh, x axis right in order to do that g at the point 0 has to be 0 now if that is the case you see g at the point x limit x tends to 0 plus okay this has to be limit x tends to 0 minus the, so if g, g tilde is continuous at the point 0 then this has to happen g of minus x okay so you understand that uh, g of 0 i mean so from here what i want you to do i mean you can see that if this is the case then uh, g of 0 to g of 0 is going to be 0 right and then g of 0 has to be 0 you understand that is why this odd reflection if this is a even if even reflection g of x can be some thing other than 0 also okay so it don't may not work yeah okay so this is the case okay uh, i hope this is clear why we are taking odd reflection because g of 0 and h of 0 is given to be 0 i want g to be 0 at the point 0 and that is why this odd reflection i am taking okay okay so essentially i am not doing anything you see i am taking a point here i am taking a point at take uh, fix a point here fix a point here okay what i am saying is what let's say uh, what is, u at this point what is it I mean, you also will take the same value here with a negative side. 
if you take the reflection of that point okay that's that's what it is saying okay and uh, this is a similar thing for g and e so if you take a point here and if you take a point here g whatever value if, if it's a if this point is a reflection of the, let's say this point is a reflection of this point okay you know what g does here in this point right you know what g does here so g will do the exact same thing here but with a negative sign that's what it is saying yeah that's the odd reflection now once you have this now this is a simple thing to note so note that if you define u tilde like this then u tilde tt minus u tilde xx that is going to be 0 in r cross 0 infinity okay please i want you guys to verify this thing yeah and u tilde is going to be g tilde and u t tilde is going to be h tilde okay on r cross t equals to c here yeah? so please verify this thing please verify okay once you verify this then you know this problem i know what is according to dlm bar formula it is given by u tilde of xt is half g tilde of x plus t plus g tilde of x minus t plus half x minus t 2x plus t h tilde of xi d xi clear and now uh, if i just break it up i mean you know uh, you see th this is for in the whole domain right but i i want you to uh, i want us to solve this problem in r plus cross zero infinity so what happens what is our original solution u of xt u tilde is given by this so u of xt will be given by two different formulas half g of x plus t plus g of x minus t okay plus half x minus t 2x plus t h of xi d xi please remember where when is h tilde a is equals to h h tilde is equals to h if x is positive so here h tilde i can write it as h if x minus t is going to be positive so if x is greater than equal t which is greater than equal zero clear now what about the other case so other case this i want you guys to just calculate yourself i mean this is very easy i mean there is nothing much to do here this is minus g of t minus x yeah this gets changed t minus x okay because this becomes g of uh, g tilde is minus g of minus g of minus x so that is why this plus gets minus and g of minus x so it gets uh, plus half x minus t uh, sorry minus x plus t to x plus t h of xi d xi if 0 less than x less than t okay so for x greater than t this is the case for x less than t but greater than equal 0 this is the case okay so this is um, in a you know half line if you want to do it in a half line you use a odd reflection and do it in this okay So basically what it says is let's say h is 0 it says that this formula so let's say this formula is given by i don't know maybe 7 yeah we did not write 7 so this formula is given by 7 that 7 says that our initial displacement g gets split into two parts okay you see g is getting split up into two parts one is moving to the right okay and one is moving to the left this is moving with a speed uh, 1 so you need in general problems and the problem will look like the utt minus c squared uxx equals to zero so the speed of this wave is given by c and here c is equals to one so basically uh, we say that the speed is given by uh, the speed is one okay so one uh, wave is moving towards uh, right moving to the right okay with speed one and one is moving towards the uh, left 
with speed one okay okay fine um now this uh one small remark i want you to uh, want to do and then we are going to end this uh, small um, video so let's say the remark is this note that g double prime of zero we are assuming it to be zero okay for u to be in c2 so i want my u to be in c2 for u to be in c2 g double prime of zero has to be equals to zero here yeah? because otherwise it won't match here here yeah? so this this condition has to be required so please uh, remember this thing so the condition which we need for this solution to exist is g0 equals to a0 equals to 0 and g double prime 0 has to be equals to 0 okay uh, for u to be in c2 otherwise this is the solution okay so generally we always assume g double prime of 0 to be 0 otherwise you know we, we want our solution to be c2 right okay right so we end it here